we always hear about God is kind and merciful. Yes, God is kind. He is merciful. Today's readings, the first reading and the gospel speak about the kindness of God. In the gospel we are seeing, John came to Jesus and said, there is someone who is casting out demons in your name, but he doesn't belong to our group. We stopped him. And Jesus said, do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. So the same thing we also have seen in the first reading. When the Spirit of God descended upon the 70 chosen ones, and two of them were sitting in the tent, and they also started prophesying, while others were in the, in the, in the, camp, in the tent praying together. And Joshua heard of this, and he asked Moses to stop them because they don't belong to this group. They don't come to this group. And Moses asked, are you jealous? If God would have given his spirit upon all of us, how good it is. If all of us become prophets, how good it is. So God is kind to those who do good. God is kind to those who do the work of God. Jesus again said, Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, he will receive his reward. If somebody is helping you, somebody is supporting you, somebody is giving you food or shelter because you belong to Christ, then definitely they will receive their reward. It doesn't matter whether they belong to Christ or not. It doesn't matter whether, whether they belong to the church or any other church. It doesn't matter whether they believe in God or not. But if they give you support or help you, give you food and shelter and drink, then they will receive the reward. That is the kindness of God. Now there is a, the other side. When we look into the rest of the gospel passage, you will see how God is kindless and merciless. This is continuous. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. What a severe punishment God is going to give if somebody is causing the little one who believes in Christ to commit sin. God has no mercy. God has no kindness upon the person who continues doing sin. Again, Jesus said, if your hand causes you to commit sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Do you think God is merciless? Do you think God is kindless? Yes, of course. He is mercy. He is kind to those who repent over the sin and leave the sin away from his life. But though God has no kind and no mercy upon those who continue committing sin or doing sins, that is what it shows. Jesus teaches us. Now, if someone causes you to commit sin, to those little ones who believe in me, if somebody causes to sin, they put a millstone, a heavy millstone around his neck and throw him in the deep sea. If he is thrown into the deep sea, he can never come back. Even if he repents on the way to the depth of the sea, he cannot come back. That is what God means here. So, Jesus was very friendly with the sinners and tax collectors. Jesus used to eat with sinners and tax collectors. Jesus went to dine with the tax collectors. They were all around Jesus. Why Jesus says like this? Because the tax collectors and sinners who met Jesus, they changed their life. 
they never went back to sins again. Zacchaeus was a, a tax collector. He met Jesus. He changed his life. He became a holy person, a saint. The woman who committed adultery, who was caught in adultery, she was a sinner, but when she met Jesus, she left her sinful ways and she never went back to that sinful way again. She changed her life and became a saint. So Jesus is kind and merciful to all the sinners and tax collectors who repent and leave the sinful way away from their life. But those who do not repent, those who remain in their sinful way, God is kindless and merciless. There is one person in the gospel who continued committing sins even after meeting Jesus. You know who it was? Judas Iscariot. He continued stealing money even after becoming the disciple of Jesus. Finally, he betrayed Jesus for money. He was completely cut off, chopped off. This is what Jesus meant here. So there is, God has no compromise with the sin. He compromises with the sinners the moment the sinner repents. But no compromise, no mercy, no kindness to those who continue doing sins in their life. That is why Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it out. If your leg, cut it out. If your eye, pluck it out. If we continue sins because of my hand, if I continue sinning because of my hand, if I continue committing sin because of my leg, if I continue committing sin because of my eye, then I don't need that. Because that will take me to the eternal punishment, Gehenna, the unquenchable fire. So, only Jesus knows the pain in the Gehenna. No one knows. And that is why Jesus said, the pain of plucking out the eye is much, much lesser than the pain that we will suffer in the unquenchable fire. And so Jesus said, the pain of plucking out the eye lasts only for a few hours. But the pain that we are going to suffer in hell is not for a few hours, but it is eternal pain. So Jesus explained this pain, the torment in hell, through the parable of the Lazarus and the rich man in Luke chapter 16. The rich man asked him, Abraham, send Lazarus to dip his finger in the water and quench my thirst. How he was tormented in the hell. And this is what Jesus explains. If you continue committing sin, the punishment that we are going to meet in hell is so severe compared to the little pain that we cut off our part of our body. So if any of our part of our body causes us to sin, it is better to cut off. It may be our part of the body. It may be a part of our family. It may be a, our business. It may be our cell phone. It may be our friendship. It may be any other relationships that cause us to continue in sin. We must cut it off, else the pain that we are going to suffer in the eternal punishment, in the Gehenna, the unquenchable fire that is so severe. So dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is not frightening us by giving these words, but he is trying to make us to understand the severe pain that we will have to take in the eternal punishment. So let us not be like John or Joshua. Let us not be jealous when God does 
good things to others. Let us not blame when God gives his blessings upon someone else. Let us be kind and merciful to others. Let us also help others, support others. Let us also do good to others, pray, receive the sacraments, go for confession. Dear brothers and sisters, if you really understand the meaning of the unquenchable fire in the Gehenna, then you will never stop going to the church. If you really understand the pain that we will have to in hell, we will never miss a mass. If you know the suffering in the hell, we will never miss the sacrament of confession. If you know the suffering, the torment in the hell, we will never lose our faith. We continue doing good to others. We continue doing praying for others. We continue going for confession and receiving other sacraments. That is, Jesus wants from us. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell, to the Gehenna. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to have eternal life. That is the will of God. That is the will of Jesus Christ. And so he is giving us a warning. Let us change our heart, repent over our sins, change our life, and become a new person, a renewed person, completely depending and trusting in God and helping others. God bless you.